Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press, where we take you through the front pages of our national dailies and bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds across the board. And we have Tunde Kolawale, who will join the conversation. Uh, good morning, Tunde Kolawale. Yeah, good morning, my sister. It's good to, I'm very well, thank you. It's good to have you join us this morning. Yeah. Okay, so let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning and find out uh, what the leadership is reporting. On the front page of the leadership newspaper, you have Electoral Act Amendment Bill, APC PDP kicks as NAS approves direct primaries. It's on page four of the leadership newspaper. Federal government states to combat hunger with Operation Feed Yourself. Uh, that's also on the leadership newspaper this morning. President Mohamed Buhari in Paris for Peace Forum. Bandits abduct 14 Zaria local government workers. Local governments get 3% increase in revenue sharing formula. Police to get new salary structure. After leadership report, NMPC to revert to Naira charges on port dues. And finally, Soludo wins Anambra governorship elections. Uh, you have Abga pulling that vote. 112,229 uh, 112, votes. Uh, all of that on the leadership newspaper this morning. It's okay. Right. That's the much we can take at this point in time. All right, let's move to the daily independent newspapers. It says a uh, big uh, story. Nigeria spends 31.2 billion naira yearly on coconut importation. Stakeholders say 32 coconut states can generate 1.92 trillion naira annually. Also, federal government and states consider Operation Feed Yourself to tackle malnutrition. It also says here on the Daily Independent, uh, APC awaits Buhari's decision on primaries as tripartite committee meeting is deadlocked. And uh, Anambra governorship poll, INEC declares Soludo winner. Uh, National Assembly OK's direct primaries and e-transmission of poll results passes Electoral Act Amendment Bill. It says no party has the right to impose its processes on another, says the PDP. Minister calls for capital punishment for illegal gold miners. Again, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya loses his wife. That's a really sad story. Ikoi building collapsed. Lagos government to release bodies of victims this week. And uh, also, Senate condemns Odili's home raid, asks IGP to make findings public. Gunmen kill seven policemen in Zamfara ambush. Kill retired F uh, Vice Marshal and grandson in Kaduna. And um, I think these are the stories on the Daily Independent this morning. Away from the Daily Independent, let's check out the Guardian newspaper this morning. And the bold caption reads, NAS snobs APC governors and passes electoral bill with direct primaries. It's a bold caption. You find several riders. I like to determine... To determine results transmission mode, direct primaries now on Mount Day 3 for political parties. Lawmakers to transmit electoral bill to Buhari within seven days. APC governors oppose direct primaries may truncate presidential ascent. Direct primaries will overstretch INEC, says PGF chairman. And you also have a PDP saying no party has right to impose its process on another. That's also what you find. Anambra Gubo, INEC declares Saludo winner on known gunmen, gunmen in shootout with security operatives. Uh, you also find IPUB gives Uzodima ultimatum to free members. And Europe begins restitution of Africa's looted artifacts. Uh, this is some of the stories on the Guardian newspaper this morning. And quickly on the Punch newspapers, governors run to Buhari as senators, reps, defy parties, Transmit bill next week, and that's on a transmission of results and direct primaries. Still on the punch, virologist NMA back uh, Lagos 6,000 vaccination admin charge. Ogun teacher brutalizes a three-year-old for inability to write. Police and gunmen clash as Saludo Uzigbo and others battle for Anambra runoff. Uh, we can also find four depots to pay NNPC's shipping charges in Naira. Still on the punch, anchor borrowers, farmers owe CBN 463 billion Naira as defaults rise. 
And also bandits gone down seven policemen on patrol in Zamfara. Burn van. F uh, finally, on the punch this morning, uh, well, not maybe not finally, Fashola completed 4,000 houses and abandoned them, reps allege. And aviation fuel prices uh, rise by 70%. In international airlines may raise fares. Good morning once again. Tunde Kolawale, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. So let's start in Anambra State. Uh, Chukumasoludo has been declared winner by INEC. Sadly, it took you know, quite um, a little longer than you know, was expected. Uh, but let's get your thoughts on um, the electoral um, process and his victory. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Kolawole. Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. All right, I'm asking that we start in Anambra State. Uh, INEC has declared Chukumasoludo oh. winner. Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, the election in Anambra State uh, is a peculiar election. Uh, we have about 2.5 million uh, registered voters, and less than 25 percent for that uh, turn out for the election. Mostly because of the high level of insecurity that we have in a number of uh, states. If democracy is supposed to be a government of the people by the people and for the people, it will be difficult for us to surmise that that election is, um, is a success. But to the extent that the election even took place at all, uh, we could say that uh, it's a fast mark for INEC and uh, a congratulation to the people of Nairobi State. But the biggest of the kudos to go to IPOC and all the other self determination group in uh, the Southeast. Initially, we thought the elections would not hold because of the fit at home order. But with the negotiation with Taipo and the other aggrieved people in the Southeast, they allowed the elections to take place. That tells you that Taipo and the other people have a lifting here. It also emphasizes the need for the Nigerian nation, the need, the need for the federal government to negotiate with all the agreed people in the Southeast for now to resolve whatever injustices that they are complaining about. The guns and bullets approach which the federal government has been applying is never likely to solve the problems that we have in the Southeast. Uh, for the IPOC and the other self determination group, I appeal to them to continue to throw the part of dialogue. This last election that are taking place in Anambra State, it was on the conference of the youth of the Southeast that the ballot papers and the ballot boxes were placed. And it was the applause of the youth that was used to do the thumbprinting of the ballot paper. We no longer want to see that in the Southeast or in any part of the country. I therefore appeal to the federal government to explore the possibility of conducting a referendum in the Southeast to address all the grievances. I've also said times without number that Mr. Namdekano's case it's a political case. It is not a case for the Nigerian court to determine. Going to court with that kind of a case will not solve the problem at all. It's like hitting the head against a brick wall. And that is not only to get us any results. Okay, let's... Then... Hello, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, the... All that dominant story again on the front page of most of the newspapers has to do with the transmission of uh, election results. 
uh, by electronics and also direct primary for all the different political parties in the country in terms of selecting their candidates. The National Assembly have done their duty. They have listened to the yearnings of the Nigerian people that this country has the capacity to transmit election results electronically, giving the state of technology on ground in Nigeria to do. But the powers that be, who don't want a free and fair election in Nigeria, don't want an electronic transmission of results. Furthermore, they don't want direct primary, simply because the godfather still want to continue to impose candidates on the respective political parties. Anybody who believes in democracy will know that election transmission of results is the path to go. Anybody who believes in the continuity of this democracy will also support direct primaries for the different political parties to select their candidates. If we don't do that path, the possibility that we can transcend this democracy is very, very high. And when you look at all over Africa today, so many coups are taking place in so many African countries of recent. The reason why these coups or why the soldiers are coming back is because of the injustice, is because of our inability to manage our democracies. It is because the people are them of ourselves who change the rules of the game in the middle of the game. Presidents who are supposed to take two times in office will amend the constitution and give themselves opportunities to continue ruling their country till they die. And because of that, the soldiers are coming back. If we don't want that kind of situation in Nigeria, let us do what is right. With regards to not just the conduct of the election, the transmission of the election, but the processes by which we select all the candidates that will represent the different political parties when it comes to standing for elected offices. Okay, so um, let's share also share your thoughts on another interesting issue on the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, local governments get 3% as an increase in revenue sharing formula. Do you think that this would actually help, uh, you know, in, in encouraging uh, growth and development in our local governments? Well, uh, it is a tokenism. Um, it is uh, it's neither here nor there. I think what the Nigerian people would like to see is a kind of wholesale review of the revenue of the revenue sharing formula. We also want to see um, kind of a serious restructuring of the Nigerian nation, such that derivation will take a large uh, chunk of where the revenue that is generated goes to, and then the rest will be paid as taxes and all that to the center for the other part of the country to share. If we are able to do this, almost 30 percent of the Nigerian problems would have been resolved. Because the situation as it were today, in which all the states and the second as and four local governments go to Abuja every month to share money, it's never likely to solve the problems that we have in our hands. It is encouraging domain, laziness, it is uh, frustrating our growth and development as a nation. It is not a quality competition among the different states in the federation and the second as a local government. So let's do restructuring politically. Let us also address the issue of the revenue, the revenue sharing formula. 
in such an holistic manner that every part of the country would know that you would no longer be the baboon walking and the monkey doing the eating. Okay, uh, let's also just stay with uh, increment and increase. Also on the leadership newspaper this morning, uh, there's also a, a story here saying, or a report saying, please to get new salary structure. Do you think that this also would help? Because, I mean, looking at the hashtag and the uh, NSAS protest and uh, all, there's a major call for reforming, you know, the police uh, structure and also do, do you think that um, you know with this increase in salary structure there might just uh, it might just be an end to all of the uncivil behavior that we see around with our police officers well uh, let me quickly say that uh, as a practicing lawyer i interact with the Nigerian police on a daily basis and i'm aware of the peculiarity of their situation. You go to most of the police barracks in there, there are no chairs, there are no tables. Policemen have to buy the better pass my neighbor generator to provide the electricity or power in their respective offices. They have to buy fuel for whatever operational vehicles they are taking up. You actually can sit in any of the police stations without bed box embedding your clothes and what have you. You also find a situation in which a family of two, three, four policemen will be living in a flat meant for just one family. The salary is also not encouraging when you compare it to the, the standard practice in the different parts of the world. So that is an inducement to corrupt. It also does not encourage the policeman. All right, um, Mr. Kolawole, um, there's some other story I think we should also look at. It's on the punch this morning, uh, top uh, left corner. It says, Anchor. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear us, Mr. Kolawole? Yes, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you. All right, so I, I'll... I was talking about the police. Yeah, yeah, we. I think we got most of that. Um, can you also speak on the Anchor Borrowers Program? It's on the Punch uh, newspapers this morning, saying um, farmers owe CBN four hundred and sixty-three billion naira as uh, payment uh, defaults rise. Uh, share your thoughts well, on that. That is, uh, I am not surprised about the Anchor Borrowers. Uh, the uh, issue, why do I say I'm not surprised? When you look at our attitude to taking loans in Nigeria and repay back that loan, it is not encouraging. Most times when people take money from the bank, they think it is their own part of the national cake, which they don't have to repay back. They forget that this money is depositors' money. And if the money is coming from the central bank, they forget that it is the nation's uh, end income, the revenue that should be equitable to the respective states, to the federal government, to the local government, that has been given to them as a loan, and which they ought to repay back in a very diligent and prudent and timely manner. But rather than do that, they see that as part of the national cake. They take the money and they never plan to take back. Furthermore, you have to show an interest in the kind of people who got these loans. If the anchor borrowers loan has been given out to political faithfuls, to members of the different political parties, to the supporters of the political parties, to the supporters of the politicians and their financiers, you will expect a default in the repayment of that uh, loan. So, but our appeal will be to those who have gotten this money that they should try as much as possible to pay back. The farmers are also having problems with respect to accessing their the different farms or wherever they have their, their plantation. Simply, 
because of the high level of insecurity. How many body can go to the farm now without fear of being kidnapped, without fear of being attacked by bandits, without the fear of uh, disappearing while in transit, without the fear of being attacked by armed robbers? So if the environment is not conducive for the farmer to do farming the way it should be done, you should expect a high rate of default in the repayment of the anchor borrowers' uh, uh, loan that has been given up by the central bank. So all this tells us that everything that happens in the society, they are interlinked. Security has to do with food production. Food production has to do with accessibility to the farm. Payment of loans has to do with providing a conducive environment for people to be able to do their business. So this is the reason why we as a people, why we as a nation, why the federal government, why the state government, why the local government should provide security for all Nigerians to be able to do their businesses without having to look over their soldiers whether somebody is about or coming to kidnap them, attack them, or, uh, or terminate their lives. Look at all the papers that we have before you today. There is hardly anyone that is not reporting one killing or attack or kidnap in the different parts of the country or the other. That doesn't speak well of us as a nation. We have become a nation now, and we will could be described are very callous and bloodthirsty people. People have no respect for human lives. People have no respect for the safety of other persons. And foreigners are looking at this. How do you think they will rate us as a people? So it is for us as a nation to decide the direction in which we want to go, whether we want peace, or we want to continue on the path of violence. But peace has always been the best for a nation that is desirous of um, developing economically, socially, and politically. Well, um, I think you've made very, very, you know, I think the, the most important points with regard to that story, you know, and that is, uh, the you know the fact that insecurity might you know be a very or may be one of the major challenges with regards um, you know agriculture thriving in the country and so no matter how much loans you give to these farmers um, if they can't farm if they can't produce and they can't you know make money off their off agriculture then they can't pay back but I think there's also a challenge with systems you know and and the the systems that have been put in place. Uh, to give these funds to the farmers and, you know, find ways to get the money back from them. Um, because you're not going to go seize their onions or seize their, their tomatoes because they haven't paid the federal government back. Uh, let's also look at something that's on the Daily Independent this morning. Um, it says there on uh, Justice Odile's house, it said, Senate condemns uh, Odile's home raid, asks the IGP to make findings public. Um, share your views on this one. The Inspector General of Police has still not been able to tell the Nigerian people which policemen raided uh, Justice uh, Mario Dili's residence. And, and it, it's taken far too long. Hello? To Nicola Willi, can you hear me? Yeah, please take that again. I'm asking you know you to react to the story on the Daily Independent. It says Senate condemns Odile's home raid and asks the IGP to make findings public. Well, uh, the raid on Odile's house is a very very big blemish on the Nigerian nation, and this kind of gestapo activity has continued unabated for too long. You will remember some time ago that the National Assembly was invaded by wounded men who were said to have come from the offices of the DFS. And the um, investigation was supposed to be done 
and the perpetrator goes to go, but today we haven't seen the result or the report of that investigation. The acting president then, that is Vice President Neil Shubato, merely dismissed or sacked the DG of the DSS. And up to now, the follow up to that action we have never seen. You also remember when the Buhari government first came to power, the DSS again and the ESCC, they went and invaded the home of some justices whom they said they suspected uh, were passing money in their respective homes and all that. And investigation was supposed to be done and the report made public, but they you will not believe it. We have not heard about the investigations that were conducted. And you also not believe it. That that invasion of the home of Supreme Court judges and that of some high court judges led to the death of some of the judges whose homes were invaded. Some of them suffered from a developed high blood pressure and eventually had a pack and, and died. And nothing has been done with regard to that. And then you will also see now where people waking up and going to the home of a uh, woman who is supposed to be number two man in the judiciary and invading her home with uh, what you could describe as a kind of a Chankara uh, such war. And all the cities that have been fingered as participated in that declaration of honorable justice of the home are denying knowing anything about it. The Attorney General of the Federation, under whose leadership the people who invaded the home were supposed to have acted and denied it. The ESCC said they don't know anything about it. The ICC said they don't know anything about it. The police also said they don't know anything about it. The truth of the matter, let me be honest with you, and sometimes truth is very, very bitter. What happened in order to do the legal is that terrorism, pure and simple. And when states engage in terrorism, they should know that they are encouraging the ordinary citizens of the nation, the ordinary citizens of the country to engage in self help not to have respect for the rule of law. And politicians should also be cautioned that power is transient. You may be in power today, tomorrow somebody else will be there. What you will not want done to you when you are out of power, please don't do it to people when you are in power today. Because what goes around will also come around. These things have continued to happen too many times are for too long, and we as a nation have to put an end to this state terrorism. Because the state actors, not individuals, that went to honorable justice of the least uh, home to conduct a kangaroo uh, uh, attack for reasons best uh, known to them. And this is not the first time the OTLE family will be humiliated. The husband of Honorable Justice Ozili was traveling abroad and he got to the airport. His passport was confiscated. He just went to court now and the court has said, look, return his passport to him. If you have any case against him, take him to court. Follow the due process of law. But it is this due process of law that the state or the people in authority don't want to follow. Yes, these same people who have no regard for the rule of law, who have no regard for court orders, who doesn't obey court orders, who also be the one to describe IPOP and all the other self-determination groups, freedom fighters in the Southeast and terrorists, when they themselves are engaged in high-wired sex terrorism. So, if they want peace in the land, let them follow and respect the rule of law. Yeah, but, but isn't this, you know, a, a, a problem, you know, that we have these things continue to happen? 
and you know there's no you know punishment the inspector general of police you know still doesn't have any answers as to who uh, carried out the raid on justice Odili's house and the national assembly doesn't seem to you know be willing to do much yes i understand that they've you know asked that he makes his findings public but it's it seems to be the way that things always happen in nigeria and in a few weeks we, we move on Which regards uh, to whatever the IG may be saying, the truth of the matter is that uh, sometimes these things are beyond the IG. Because we must also remember that the IG is appointed by somebody. And the person that appoints the IG can also track what it means the IG. And so, if you don't have an independent IG who can take action and do what is right for most issues that pertain to security and investigation, the possibility that uh, his arms can be twisted so as not to get to the, or the full details of what's happening in order to just go to the is very, very high. I have lost faith in the capacity of the Nigerian police to investigate serious matters such as this, especially when the state is uh, involved. Because if you are also an appointee of the same state and you don't have independence or act, you are not likely to be able to do an independent and verifiable investigation and come up with a report that will be satisfactory or that will truly reflect what's transpired in uh, some of these uh, places. Is the IG now going to indict the Attorney General of the Federation? If it was the Attorney General that sent people to the home of Honorable Peter Fidel, is he going to indict the Director of GSF? If it was the director of GSS that has sent people to go and invade the home, is he going to indict the national security advisor? If the national security advisor is involved in this malfeasure, also remember that I wired politics is already involved in this. Honorable put your society is the number two person in the judiciary today. He's the TJN that is there today, retire. Honorable Justice Otili, like uh, Honorable Justice Mukta, will become the CD of the Federation. It is not impossible that it is because they want to tarnish our image, they don't want us to become the CGN, the Chief Justice of the Federation, that they have embarked on this campaign of uh, blackmail, on this campaign of tarnishing the image of Honorable Justice Otili, on this campaign of intimidation and harassment to force her to quit the bench so as to pay or whoever they may want to see become the chief justice of the situation. That is why I say elements of state terrorism and high wired politics is involved in what is happening or I mean the old family. And it wouldn't be the first time it is happening. Honorable Justice Musa also went through her as a woman to become the chief justice of Nigeria. At the time, they said they wanted to send her to the Gambia to become the CGN of the Gambia judiciary. And the woman saw through the anki panki and declined the, the offer. They also tried to intimidate her using all forms of uh, tricks and strategy. But the woman stood firm. At the end of the day, she made the street by becoming the first woman CGN in Nigeria. Honorable Justice Otili has also shown courage by resisting those who invaded her home and standing up to them and frustrating the blackmail campaign, the campaign of intimidation and harassment that they brought to our doorstep. All right. Tunde Kolawale. Uh, I think uh, that's all the time that we have this morning for the stories making headlines. Thank you very much for joining us this Thank Wednesday. Thank you for having me, my brother.
Have a beautiful day. You have a great day. You too. All right. And, and my uh, respect to your sister there. Thank you for joining us, uh, Tunde Kolawole. All right. Uh, just before we go, uh, we, of course, are going to quickly jump into a little bit of uh, history this morning and quickly share with you. Uh, remember, our first conversation, of course, is moving to Anambra right after we tell you of uh, today in history. We're moving back to the year 2010. Uh, it's been a very, very long time since we started hearing about uh, strikes, uh, strike actions by labor unions in Nigeria. But on this day, the Nigerian labor unions, uh, you know, called off a nationwide strike, the NLC, uh, called off a nationwide strike on this day, the 10th of November to, in 2010, protesting minimum wage across the oil, well, across Nigeria. Um, its main uh, labor unions, you know, called off the strike. They eventually would come back on strike about a month later to evaluate the government's progress on their demands. On this day, banks, schools, and parts of the transport system in um, Nigeria were shot as workers began what had been planned as a three-day strike to press for the monthly minimum wage to more than double. Uh, the NLC uh, and, of course, the Trade Union Congress wanted at that time an increase of minimum wage from 7,500 naira to 18,000 naira. <laughs> Good luck, Jonathan, of course, was uh, president at this time. And, um, you know, it didn't go as planned. Eventually, the, the, you know, the, um, the uh, strike was eventually called off after the government promised, you know, that there would be some changes and there would be negotiations. A month later, of course, the strike you know, came back into uh, force again. But this is what happened on this day in the year 2010. The NLC and TUC eventually called off a warning strike uh, by, of course, by these two bodies against the Nigerian government while they demanded an increment in the minimum wage. Stay with us. We're moving to Anambra State right after this short break. And we're going to be talking about the, of course, uh, victory of Chukumar Soludo and, of course, uh, how the elections eventually turned out after supplementary elections on Tuesday. We'll be back.